Hello. Oh, yeah. There's not much going on right now, and we're like five minutes out of the major. Yeah, it's kind of the calm before the storm, right? There's like some roster stuff happening, but everyone's kind of waiting until after this. And then you've got like yeah. Brody coming up. So it's, it's a bit of a calm. Yeah, there, I am Chengdu is going on right now. Uh, I'll, I'll say this at the beginning. Normally, we are pretty good about covering everything that we can in terms of like events that go on. This event is really hard for both of us to cover. Yeah. Because both of us are on basically North America time. Uh, me, actually, and you, theoretically. Yes. I woke um, up at 10 past 3 p.m. <laughs> today. Yeah. That's like two hours ago. So it's like 10 a.m. here. Yeah. I was, um, I was struggling. So beca- but because of that, right, uh, neither of us have watched any of the games because the the latest game looks to start at, uh, it was started at like 6.30 in the morning. Um, which is when I get up to like go to work. <laughs> so yeah, the the the, we haven't watched the latest <laughs> game does not does not seem. I've almost stayed up to watch the first game at some points though. So there is that the, the three a.m. games for me. Yeah, I was kind of like close to one of them. <laughs> I think one of them started like half four my time. I nearly watched it, it. Either way, events in China are really terrible for me to watch. And they're not great for you to watch. Yeah. It's part uh, of the reason I actually want to figure... go to the major in China, so I'll actually be awake to watch it. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'll probably just pull a couple of late nights when we hit towards Shanghai Major uh, to watch yeah. it. But like, this is the problem because okay, this happens in League of Legends too. When, cause we, yeah, all the events in like, like Korea, Korea and China yeah. and stuff. Yeah, so like this year, MSI in Chengdu. Yeah. Uh, what the fuck am I <laughs> like? I generally watch all international events. What the fuck am I right. supposed to do? Fu- no, no, no. Because in League of Legends, there's so many shit games early on. Like literally, like <laughs> Vietnamese teams versus Brazilian teams. Like I, it's no, so okay, shit. <laughs> okay. We need to take a sidebar. Have you seen the Vietnam thing <laughs> that's going on? I think so. so. Half of the half of the fucking players in the league got banned from the league because they were all match fixing. Amazing. And so, and so they brought back a bunch of like old VCS players to play in sets like SOFM, huge famous jungler. Yeah, yeah. He owns a team now. He's playing support for that team into the yeah. VCS playoffs because this is what they have to do per rules to fucking to go into playoffs. It's insane. You always think that like we have it terrible in Counter Strike with like max but match fixing and betting and shit, and then you find out an entire franchise league has been match fixing. Yeah. I, I like East Asia, just like not to be sort of stereotypical, but it's quite common in East Asia. Were you drinking a beer? No, I'm drinking what I drink every week, which is Liquid Death, which is sparkling water. It it's deliberately actually, stylized to look like a beer, though, right? Yeah, I actually have two cans. I think I'd rather be drinking beer in the middle of the day than sparkling water. I fucking hate sparkling water. I I love sparkling water. This is what we've been reduced to, by the way. (laughs) Yeah, this is what happens when nothing fucking happens. I hate sparkling water. I really do. (laughs) I love sparkling water. No, it's disgusting. I know that... Isn't it in, like, in mainland Europe? I guess that's actually all Europe at this point, because the UK isn't part of Europe. We're part of Europe, Uh, we're just not part of the EU. Yeah, but not... Okay, but... In mainland Europe, don't they just automatically give you sparkling water? Isn't that uh, like a, in in a lot of really countries, a Germany definitely. Um, a lot of places they'll ask, especially if you speak to them in English. If you speak yeah. to them in English, they'll often go and you say, "Can I get water?" They're like uh, sparkling or still, but they'll always say sparkling or yeah. still, not still or sparkling. That's a, no, because sparkling, sparkling is kind of the choice. de facto there. Yeah, <laughs> right. In, in England, it's absolutely not like. It's definitely still. No, I know I know in England it's not. When I was there years ago, yeah. it, it, it definitely was not. In America, there's you you're there's no choice. You get still water. Yeah. You get Rightfully still water. so. Fucking sparkling water is disgusting, bro. It's so you horrible. You have for like club soda or seltzer. Yeah, you have all sorts of like weird names for it. Like right? water. Yeah. We have plenty of weird names for it. Speaking of weird names, let's talk about Counter Strike yeah. stuff. Yeah. Uh, NIP have confirmed their newest signing for this roster. I say newest because I'm not convinced that they're done making moves. No, they still need a fifth, right? Yeah, they officially need a fifth, but 
it's been it's not great. So currently this roster before this was Rez and Alex. We all have thoughts on uh on Rez. Alex were pretty high on, but I'm <laughs> quickly getting lower on. Yeah, to be fair, he did join the one team in the world that if you join, you become worse. Yeah, pretty much. Um so Rez and Alex, they added Maxter from their uh, academy roster. He was yep. Fine on the academy roster, to be honest. I don't think he was. He's a good player. Yeah. It's just kind of a bit late for this move. They should have done it six months ago. Yep. And then, in their genius thought process, they went, "What's the next Ukrainian sniper we can get after head trick?" With a one in his With name. With a one in his name, <laughs> and got Wrinkle, who I do think is very good. I agree. I do think Wrinkle is very good. But we also said that about head trick, and then he joined NIP. I think Wrinkle is better than Hedrick. Yeah, but they both... And he's also a, a genuine Orpa. Hedrick was only an Orpa out of necessity. Yeah, but I don't know. I still... The NIP curse still still thinks of being there. Oh, yeah. like but <laughs> No matter who... Curses can't that. last forever. I mean, obviously, because an actual curse probably does last forever. But, like, they can't always be bad. <laughs> If you keep signing good players, eventually you will be good. Like this is kind of kind of what I hate about the whole NIP thing. It's like, oh, NIP should just sign a Swedish team because they're going to be bad anyway. Like they might as well sign a Swedish team, so at least they've got brand identity. So, like, well, a you only have a brand identity if you're a good Swedish team. Being an actual Swedish team doesn't matter. But b the reason NIP are bad isn't because they're not signing Swedish players. It's because they're signing bad players. If they just sign good players, that's fine. Just sign good players. I know it's really easy. I know it sounds really easy to be like, oh, just sign good players. But that is 99% of recruitment yeah. in esports. The other 1% is like, don't sign somebody who's going to blow up the whole team by being an asshole. And even yeah. then, sometimes it's kind of worth well, it. And NIP have famously had that issue, both issues at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> what a team. <laughs> I, I like just just sign good players. It's not hard. I yeah. I, I don't have more. But they've of, started like, to do it at least. So they've signed Wrinkle. They still have a fifth slot open. Uh, they're obviously going international again for this roster. Um, the second they said Alex was staying on, that was going to happen. I don't even. I can't even think of who they fill with their fifth here. Yeah, like so. Um, do you know who it should be? And I think would make a lot of sense on this team and would be a genuine upgrade and probably make this team like top 20. It should be Zyphon. Okay. What is, what is he doing? He's available. He plays a lot of the spots they don't currently have a player for. He's very good. Well, he's signed um, to TSM, so... Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> it's exactly where they should sign him because no decent player should be consigned to TSM. Do you know what the TSM roster is right now? As a rule, no. <laughs> Zyphon, Quartz, who is a Czech player. Joel, the guy who was accused of match fixing like a year ago. Yeah. Uh, Valda. Jesus. And Poison. Wow. <laughs> yeah, like just save Zyphon from that, I think. <laughs> that'd, be re- that'd be a really good move for everyone involved, I think. Like, this team used to have Jax and Inters on it, and I kind of thought it was interesting for five minutes, and then... It was interesting, but it was also just obviously bad, oh, yeah. because they just had, like, 15 support players. Well, the... you know what this team needs? It needs a... I can't get my camera in the right place. Let me get... This team needs, like, an actual star rifler, because obviously Rez isn't going to be it, and Alex isn't it. And Maxter's not. Gonna... Alex was like sort of a star right from Mobby Star. He had pop off moments, but he needs. Um, they need. And an... He kind of put himself in decent roles. They need an actual star rifle, though. Yeah, like of course. I mean, I think the problem is everyone needs an actual star rifle. Hey, I don't think that Vitality needs a star rifle. I think they've got enough. Yes, <laughs> but they would also look if you got rid of. <laughs> Oh, I guess Sphinx is pretty hard to upgrade on. Yeah, your, your up your upgrade person is you upgrade Apex, or it's you, actually no, no, it's actually you upgrade Flames. Yeah, it's you upgrade Flames. That's actually one. how they get better. But uh, Mezzi kind of does all their all their entry fragging and all their like he, jumping through smokes. He does, as I quote, the bitch rolls. Yeah, I try not to try not to use that word. 
roll. <laughs> I'm trying to use the word roll. I'm an entry fragger. That's yeah, no, how I, 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 I also play bitch rolls. Don't worry, <laughs> so, I'm, I'm taking the piss. I also play bitch rolls. Um, okay, so other weird roster shit that's happened. Uh, we'll spend six seconds on this, but uh, FlyQuest picked up the former Greyhound lineup. They went and played in Chengdu. They were not the worst team there, which is a big win as opposed to normal Greyhounds. And their shirts are so So sexy. they've had these shirts in LCS for the entire season, okay? They've got like iridescent fly quest on them and it's like raised and stuff. I want to buy one so badly, but I... If I didn't hate Australians, I'd buy I was going to say, the problem is, is like if that organization goes against everything i i like not the tree planting stuff because they like plant trees and stuff that's great i hate fucking <laughs> trees dude i hate them so no much. but like i'm a team liquid fan especially in league of legends and tl just beat them in the finals and like i don't like this australian fly quest team i would have liked a different team it's like you go and every decision is like ah oh, you're so close you were so close but all of their shirts like the ones they did at worlds a few years ago with mm-hmm. like the flowers and the dragons yep. and shit Fucking wicked. We could do I could do a whole episode on good and bad esports shirts. Um I we were gonna do something similar for the magazine actually at one point, but it, it didn't make the cut. Maybe maybe we um, have to do that for next week because I'm not convinced that anything's gonna actually happen between yeah. now and next week. Yeah. And I want to talk about the massive, massive downgrade BNE made when they signed for Guild. Because those shirts <laughs> suck we, so actually, badly let's, compared to BNE. Let's talk about Jersey for a second, because Heroic unveiled new jerseys for Chengdu. Yeah, they unveiled the uh, the Southampton shirt. It just looks like a Southampton shirt. It's not on, like, it's not bad. It just looks like a Southampton shirt. Oh, wow. It kind of does. Um, yeah, it really does. <laughs> yeah, but they're different. And I like different. But yeah, no, I, I don't have a problem Do you know with how that. Many like, I think that's fucking fun. team showed up to the major with a white jersey with a little bit of accent color and a big spot. Oh my god, there were so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bring me interesting jerseys. The the right. So the best, I'd say like some of the best jerseys around right now. Fury always have nice shirts. Like, always have nice shirts. Like the the one that was like white that sort of gradiented into black. Yep. Looked like the, a football the, like, shirt. Ink drop one that they. they yeah, have. yeah. You could wear that in public and pretend it's a football shirt and nobody would question you. Yep. Just say, oh yeah, they're a Brazilian second division team. Nobody would care. Yep. Team spirit. Very cool. Yep. Um, I, uh, I had an, oh, Eternal Fire. Eternal Fire shirts are cool as well. Eternal Fire jerseys are cool. It's the black and gold one. It's very cool. Uh, I can't think of any more right now off the top of my head. Uh, I kind of like the Bet Boom ones because they don't look like, yeah. like shirts at all. They just look like they made a cotton. They look very comfortable. I I want some team to just make a, a rugby jersey, like a rugby shirt jersey. Mm. I think that would that would go really hard. I'd be, I'd be yeah. I, def- I definitely think you could as well. Like, there's definitely room for it. Vitality makes some really cool stuff. I don't yeah, necessarily I know, like, care for their shirts, but they're like T- some of their stuff's cool. TL makes other merch that's very cool, but their jerseys just like been the same for a while now. Let it be known that Team the, Liquid's their alter- Naruto stuff is cool. Their alternative but I don't like Naruto. have been mm. like very good. Like the when we had the Captain America jerseys and the X Men jerseys and stuff during the Liquid run, that was yeah. great. But the regular jerseys, say, it's it's all. I say the Naruto stuff is cool, but I'm not a weeb, so I can't <laughs> wear it. Yeah, I love a lot of their Naruto stuff, but I I just don't watch Naruto, so I feel yeah, it. like the, the stuff's actually quite cool, but I do not want people to think I'm a weeb. <laughs> I'm already scared. Like, I have some like Pokemon stuff that's got like Japanese writing. I'm like, can I get away with this? Probably just about. Um, all right, let's talk about some other roster moves. One win in Europe has finally kind of rebuilt themselves. Yeah. Um, this team kind of looks bad. It, it kind of does, but I'm interested. So it, it's Nilan from Gamer Legion from Evil Geniuses via Gamer Legion for six seconds. Buster. Yep. From. Vertus Pro to Cloud Vertus Nine. Vertus Pro to Cloud Nine to, <laughs> to here. Yeah. Uh, Gyro, I think is how you say his name. A Gyo. Gyo. V- from... He's sort of like a journeyman. He's been on a bunch of teams. Yeah, he's been on like everything. Uh, Ryujin, who actually. No idea. Yeah, no, no clue. Uh, so, like, if normal CIS team rules apply, Ryujin is the best player in the world. He, he is an Uzbeki player, so. Yeah, he he's just he's probably the best player in the world. I've never heard of him, and he's on a team with players I have heard of. He's probably the best player in the world. That's how CIS teams work. <laughs> and the last player is uh Laddie, who was on the Aurora squad. 
Yeah. Which famously is known for. I think he's quite good. I think he was good too on the Aurora. But I can't squad. remember. I can't, like, I, I find it difficult to tell those players apart. I was going to say, here's how you tell them apart. He was the one with the orange hair. Yeah, see, that doesn't help me. <laughs> if you go. So, I do. I just don't like. I've watched them play several times, and I cannot tell their players apart. So if you go onto their HLTV page, or you used to be able to go onto their HLTV page, and they had all five of the players, every one of them had a different hair color. Yeah, they they dyed it for charity. I think it was. It was so. Oh, it was like um. They said, oh, if we qualify for the major, we're all going to dye our hair for charity or something like that. And then obviously somebody got annoyed about it on Twitter, and they're like, it's literally for charity. <laughs> Fucking weirdo. Um, yeah, this team's going to suck. Um... It might not, because they do have Ryujin, who we've just determined <laughs> is the, the best, best player in, in the world. world. <laughs> so, Or at least he will be for like six... He's going to do like the lollipop 21k thing, where he's just the best player in the world for like three months. Yeah, we, we rumor him... Fade into obscurity. Rumor him to every single team. Yeah, uh... <laughs> I'm still convinced lollipop 21k is good. Bring him back. I don't know where he is. I have no, I have literally no clue, and I refuse. He's, to he's like a, the hardest deathmatch grinder <laughs> in the world, by the way. Like, there's a deathmatch. I can't remember which one it is. It's the deathmatch over all the pros play, like every month Please. for like, f- like eighteen months, maybe. It's like every month for eighteen months, he was the like the highest killer on there. So that's why he was good for a bit. It's because he just exclusively played deathmatch. You couldn't kill him. All right. I got one more roster thing, then we'll talk about our predictions for a playoff bracket that we watch zero of the group stage games for. Um, mm. Last thing, uh, Furia at I am <laughs> Chengdu. I managed to mute my microphone in time to sneeze, well. and that was close. Nice done. They uh, won against Lin Vision, as kind of as expected, or at least you hope to be expected. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> they lost to Mao's, lost to Harag. The yep, fine. owner of the team, Akari, came out and said, and I quote, the moment requires changes and they will be done. Wow, that's kind of ominous. Yeah. The moment requires changes and it sort of like implies that it's actually nothing to do with them. Like, well, so, all of the okay. changes are going to be made a divine intervention. So, so the whole quote, I think, is actually very important. And I have to translate this. So, uh, uh, see, see, okay. Okay. We never shy away from ch- any changes. When they don't happen, it's for two reasons. We don't want to, or it's not possible. Just directly... Ever- Isn't that obvious? That's, what, <laughs> other, what other possible reason could there be for not changing? No, but I love it. We never ran from change. When it doesn't happen, it's because we didn't want to change. <laughs> yeah, so that's kind of running... Yeah, so you're right. But that, those are the only two reasons you wouldn't make a roster change. You don't want to, or you can't. What other reason can there possibly be? Uh, Genuinely, I cannot think of another possible reason not and to make a roster don't change. don't want to is doing a lot of work there. <laughs> well, also, yeah, that covers a lot of things. Like, why don't you want to? Like, so Insane. Insane posting. I wonder if 2024 is the year that we finally get uh, no art on Furia, or if they're going to make yeah. another move. Or... It depends if they want to or not. <laughs> Apparently. So the question is, like, do they make another move with like fallen maybe and bring in a different sniper i cannot sniper. see a world where they've been off fallen i just can't they spent too much money on him in my exactly in my head that like for them to do it. do they do, do they get rid of like k serato or yuri because they say oh you definitely don't get rid they, of k serato i i agree but because you say they don't work in art system or something like that and you buy- no, you get rid of... If you get rid of one of the riflers, you get rid of Yuri. If you get rid of it, it anyone else, it's art, Let's I be think. very clear. I think both of us I just are- don't see the... Like, I think it could be Fallen, and that would be fine. I just don't think they will. I don't think they will either. I, but I think that keeping Fallen is the better choice. Realistically... I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but I also don't think it's a choice they're ever going to make. I think the best choice is actually get rid of everyone but cello and caserato and maybe kind yuri of kind of fire and rebuild get rid of both i'm, I'm not balls. convinced i think yuri is a bit of a busted flush like he used to be really good yeah. he hasn't been good for a long, but long I think time cello now. you should keep and you should absolutely keep caserato cello super talented yeah but like after that no one should be safe yeah i agree all right uh there's like so much talent in brazil as well yeah, there like, is like we just saw pain make it like further yeah. than fury it is like nisim nisim's available 
you know what? They could probably sell art for the same amount they, they could buy Nism for. Mm. It's so off, but then somebody's got to have to want to buy art. You know that there's probably a million teams in Brazil that want to buy art. Yeah, true. All right, let's talk about I Am Chengdu. As we told you earlier, neither of us have watched any of the groups. So we're going to talk about the playoff stage bracket as if we have any clue in the world with zero clue in the world, basically only operating. I know everything. I'm going to operate as if I've only looked at Twitter, which is true because I've looked at Twitter. I mean, I've watched some highlights, but that obviously never tells you the full story. No. Um, so the, I saw Yimfat win a 1v4 with 6 HP against Yuri. I did see that too. I, did, I, I saw a couple like, of Twitter highlights. Um, genuinely baffling. First thing, quarterfinals, Virtus Pro against G2. Um, everything I have heard says that Monacy is the greatest player in the world and his team is holding him back. I believe Hunter basically came out and said Monacy is the best player in the world right now. Yeah, I think he said but like he's slightly biased. I think he said something along the lines of like he is in the best form of any player in the world or some shit. It yeah. wasn't like he's the goat, but well, yeah. I mean, we've seen at the major that G two are basically holding Modesty back. Um, Nico's not playing that well at the moment. Hunter's been pretty awful for a while by his own standards. He's not yeah, awful yeah, by yeah. like you know he's not worse than he's probably like Advent. he's probably the second best rifler on most teams but 12 months ago yes yeah but not right now not right now he's the fourth best rifle on most teams yeah he, he's he's really not very good next uh like he's fine next is kind of like not the problem on this team but because the problem started once they brought him in yeah it kind of looks like it's his fault i kind of i kind of feel a bit bad for Nexa because it's not his fault nico shit now no i i the problem is we all at the beginning of like when they brought Nexa in, we were like, "Oh, there's Hooksy's going to be on the out now," and they they just seem to want to keep both, and that's yeah. fine. And it seems like Nexa's doing fine, right? It doesn't seem like Nexa versus JKS was like a huge downgrade or anything. But Nexa Hooksy would be fine if Nico and Hunter were playing like exactly. Nico and Hunter. Exactly, it would be perfectly fine. Exactly, uh, they're playing up against versus Pro. Who are doing Virtus Pro things again? I'm glad to see Virtus Pro are just still good. I, like they kind of got cheesed by G2 at the major, so there's that sort of storyline. So as I was saying, Mouse really good. Honest to God, they probably win against either of these teams, so it will be considerably closer against Virtus Pro. Mouse are a very very good group stage team. Um, they're sort of the new heroic, where they're really really good in group stages and kind of crumble on stage. The difference is they're about like a combined age of about 25. So they're yeah. going to just grow out of it. Whereas Heroic were a little bit later in their careers, didn't have time on their side. A combined age of 25. Dude, they're so young. They're, they're all an, like 15. Their average age is 20. Yeah, they're so young. And you know, pretty sure Falcons are the only... Falcons are like the only team in the world with an average age above my actual age. There's three 21-year-olds, a 17-year-old, and a 19-year-old. That's how they get to that match. They're That's so insane. young. They've got so much time to get good on stage. All right. So the other quarterfinal match, in my opinion, is the better match. And by better, I mean more fun to look at. It's FaZe, out of their Copenhagen finals run, against yeah. Liquid, out of their Copenhagen's airport speed run, i.e. back to Europe from America, where they had to play in the RMRs and didn't get through. Yes. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> that made sense. Yes. So Liquid's back, maybe. Um, they they look like they, they look know better. How to play count- they know look like they know how to play Counter Strike. Yeah, the the bits I've seen, they look at least vaguely coherent, which is nice. Yeah. So I think uh, I'm I'm in the Dust Two Discord. Messioso had basically said, uh, "Who's the the complexity manager?" Um, I basically said something along the lines of like, hey, this may actually be a better thing over time for Liquid that they didn't go play in the major, that they just got a ton of time to just figure their shit out. Um, and they weren't in like ultra high pressure situations and stuff. And like 
in the long term, this may be better. And we know for a fact that Liquid is not one of the teams that will continuously just uh, recycle players in and out. Like they yeah. won't. They just because they didn't qualify for the major doesn't mean fuck this team. They're gone. We're switching it completely, like certain other teams will. Um, so there's some faith in me that this team may actually be okay that they've made the quarterfinals. Um, I mean, mm-hmm. the way that they got here is they just they lost to Mouse. That was yeah. it. Mouse and is the like, best group stage team in the world. Yeah, and, and I mean, you lost to Mouse. What, what are you going to do about that? Yeah, yeah, no, they 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 got a big win against. Was it Phase? They beat somebody good. They beat uh, Heroic. They beat G two. G two. G two and Heroic. Yeah, I mean, those are pretty pretty solid wins. I mean, Heroic not the same as they were before, but they're still pretty good. It, um, Heroic was in a best of one. We can not think too hard about that. But the yeah. the G two one, like G two, was still a what are they semi-finalists in yeah, the major yeah. they just haven't they should have been finalists they should have beaten rv but like it's totally reasonable to say hey look that could beat g2 this is a reasonable thing for us to look at right um so i think it'll be interesting as it goes on to see if this team actually have figured their shit out uh the winner of this plays the most unlikely winner of group b astralis under device igl who have kind of sort of maybe figured out how they want to play this game but it's okay though because blame f definitely wasn't the problem it's just a case of if you remove him you immediately get better yeah they but just, he wasn't they, the problem no he wasn't the problem no definitely not just just removing him it does make you a better team but like it's not it's nothing to do with him being yeah it wasn't it wasn't a problem nothing to um, do with him no absolutely nothing yeah. <laughs> but they they i've watched some astralis clips because in my mind i went what the fuck happened how how did astralis become good Mm -hmm. (laughs) after we the clusterfuck at the rmrs that like never got them through i something about device igling it doesn't seem like they've lost anything device has played under every single good danish igl except like msl he's actually that's not true but like every igl he's played under has been good You'd have He's to, going to have learned something. I was going to say, you have to think at one point that he may have an idea of what's going on. He played with Glaive and Carrigan. He knows what he's doing. And he like, he's coached, not an idiot. And he was coached by Zonic for a while. And regardless of like what you think about any like how much a coach does or not, there's some amount that like Rugga is the current coach for Astralis. He's obviously a good coach. We have we've we've known that for a bit. He was yeah. also coached by Zonic. Like, if you wanted a supporting structure for a player. Yeah, the only player that gets this that has gotten this amount of supporting structure is Zai Wu. Yeah, it, if you were building an IGL from scratch, you'd be like, right, I'd want him to learn from Zonic, Glaive, Carrigan, and I'd want him to be like, you know, he wants somebody who's won on stage, come yep. consistently, yep, and whose game isn't necessarily reliant on like super high mechanics. But can play mechanically well. He, oh yeah, no, he like obviously he's mechanically good. Yeah, My yeah, point is, he, he learned to play in a way where he didn't need to be the best mechanical player. That's what I'm saying. Ever. He 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 can hold his own. It's like how when you have a footballer who used to be really fast, when they get old, they just become a bit useless. But when you have a player who never really relied on speed, and they get old, it's like, oh, he's still good because he never needed to be quick. So the LeBron James of it all. Yeah, except LeBron James at his peak was a physical monster. He just happens to still be a physical monster at 39. Yeah. Like, that dude is still ridiculously strong at 39 years old. Yeah. <laughs> it's a little insane. That Neither here nor there. Um, the So the winner of the Liquid Phase match goes to play against Astralis. Um, honestly, here's the thing. I can't really tell you how that side will go. Um, I think Phase should beat Liquid. They should. I, they, they should. I but also, they, they, are, should. they have a bit of a post-major hangover. Yeah, I think Liquid should beat Astralis, but there's there's some there's kind of some weird uh, anti every no team likes each other here. Yeah, every team's just kind of existent with each other. There's there's storylines all over the place here. Yeah. Um, in my head, this is this is a Mouse Vegas final. Um, yeah, I, I I like. I think it's good for the scene if Mouse keep getting stage time. Yeah. And this is like lower pressure than the major than Cologne. 
they, for, for them going into Cologne, having won an event in Chengdu would be really big. Um, mm. Because then, like, oh, we can win on stage. You go to Cologne with the crowd on your side, suddenly it's like, feels so like a bit less pressure. I mean, that has to be good for them. Well, we'll see if it's good or not. That's going to be it for us this week. There was really not much going on. And with the fact that neither of us uh, were awake <laughs> during I am Chengdu, it's yeah. uh, a little rough to cover this week. We'll be back in next week. Hopefully more stuff has happened. And uh, well, and if not, we'll talk about ev- the best shirts <laughs> in esports. Yeah. And if not, we'll, we'll do a tier list of the best esports jerseys yeah. of all time. Yeah. Yeah. And current. Maybe we'll make it a two-parter. We'll see. Thank you all for watching. You can find us on Twitter at LoganRampUp, at AZSKIN, at RetailTheR. We'll see you all next week. Peace.